Have you ever been working on an edit and you're trying to get things to move on screen, whether that's text coming in and showing up on screen or maybe something popping out towards the viewer and then moving back away? All of those motions, zooms, animations, those are all done with keyframes. And we've talked about that quite a bit on the channel. But when you're trying to make those look professional, that's when learning about how to ease those keyframes can be really important. So if you don't know what easing keyframes is or how to do that, that's what we're gonna be talking about here today. Here I am with an open project, 16 by nine. I've got some footage up here. Let me grab this one right here. Some footage of a motorcycle at a motorcycle show. And as it plays, it's just people looking at some of these motorcycles that are on display. But let's say I wanted to take this footage and I wanted to zoom in to, let's say one of the tires because they have a really interesting hubless design. Let's say I wanted to zoom in down to this rear back tire. Maybe it started playing and at this point I wanted to start the zoom in. What I would do is select that footage in my timeline, go to the upper right to the transform option. And I'd click on this red dot at the very top, that diamond, and I'd set a keyframe. And then I would play forward or move the playhead to the point where I wanted to zoom in to stop and I could adjust it using some of these things up here, some of these zoom aspects and the XY position to move this on screen to where I want it. But I like using this option right here. It's the on screen transform option, which allows me to physically grab things on screen by left clicking and holding and just moving them where I want. So let me zoom in here. I'm going to zoom into something I think makes sense. Let's say right about something like that. And if you notice in the upper right, DaVinci Resolve sets that second keyframe because we already set the first. This is stuff I've talked about in depth and I'll leave links down below if keyframing is new. But let's say you know this basic concept of animating with keyframes. Well, now when I play through, the footage will stay there, then start zooming in where I told it to zoom in and stop when it hits that second keyframe. But that motion out of the box is really kind of flat and stagnant and it doesn't look smooth or professional. And that's something that we can improve. Now I am using DaVinci Resolve 20 and everything I'm gonna show you here is available in both the free version or the studio version. So it doesn't matter which version you have, as long as you have version 20 downloaded on your desktop system, you'll be able to do everything I'm showing you here. Now, if I wanted to see those two keyframes that I just put in my timeline, you'll notice just here in the upper left of the timeline, there is a show keyframe tray. And if I click it, you now get this option down below. Can you see? This is the keyframe tray. And you can see it set initial keyframes for all of these transform options, the zoom factor, the position X and Y, the rotation. And then the things that I changed are represented right here. I changed the X and Y zoom position and I changed the X position and the Y position. Now let me explain that for a second because I think that's kind of confusing. Like what's the difference between zoom X and zoom Y and position X and position Y? Let me go right back up and I'm gonna reset all of this keyframe animation by clicking on the reset button in the upper right transform window. Now everything's back to where it started. This is just the original piece of footage. Now keep an eye on the preview window. If you notice, if I grab the zoom X right here, left click and hold, I'm literally holding right where the numbers are and dragging my mouse to the left and to the right. You'll see when I push it to the right, it zooms in. And when I push it to the left, it zooms out. But if you notice while I do that, both the X and the Y zoom values here are both moving. And the reason it's doing that is because this little icon, this chain link, those two values are linked together. If they were unlinked for any reason, and I tried to move just the X, which is your width, and I left click and held, it would start stretching and skewing this image because it's only moving the zoom of the X factor, how wide it is left to right. And if I started moving the Y value, it would start stretching it up and down because those are the two zoom factors, up and down, left and right. When they're locked, it just looks like the whole thing's moving in and out. When they're unlocked, it's only gonna zoom in each direction, which effectively stretches your clip depending on which of those that you're moving the X or the Y. Now the position X and position Y down below those literally deal with the entire image based on left, right, up, down, no stretching. So it's not a zoom, it's not gonna zoom in at all, it's just gonna move the position on screen. So the position X, if I left click and held and moved to the left, it would move that whole video clip on screen to the left. Doesn't go up or down at all, just moves it left. And if I pull it right, it's gonna go back to the right. So that position X is gonna move things left and right. And then the position Y, if I left click and hold and move left and right, it's gonna move that up and down because Y controls up and down. So knowing those things, let's do that same animation one more time. Let's move the playhead in a little bit. We'll set a keyframe right here. I'm gonna move the playhead a little bit forward. And then I'm going to use this transform on screen preview window to left click and hold. And I'm gonna drag in. So when I play through, it gets that first keyframe, starts moving, gets the second one and stops. And that motion is very static and very jerky. 
the minute it hits the first keyframe, it takes off like a rocket. And then when it gets to the second keyframe, it slams on the brakes and stops. There's no subtlety to that motion. It's almost like getting in a car and slamming on the gas. And when you get to the stop sign, you slam on the brakes. When we start building more professional looking animations or motions, we want to be able to control that motion a little bit more in terms of the keyframe spline. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now in DaVinci Resolve 20, we not only have the ability to see our keyframes in the keyframe tray right here, but in the upper left, you'll see we have a new keyframe editor panel that if you click on, it shows us those same keyframes, but in a larger window that we can do more things with. Now this window can be popped out. If I click right there, you'll see this window comes out and I can bring it in different places if I wanted to do that. If I want to put it back, I just hit the X and it'll jump back into that spot. But it looks very similar to the keyframe tray underneath in our timeline. But here's where it does something Thing that that keyframe tray doesn't. You can see here the zoom X and Y that I've added keyframes for because I made that motion and the position X and position Y have also added keyframes. Just from that simple zooming into the rear tire, resolved it all the heavy lifting and put them into the keyframe editor according to what I had modified. Zoom X, zoom Y, position X, position Y. It figured all that out for me. But if I wanted to change that motion to make it a little bit smoother, what I could do is go up here to the upper left of the keyframe window, and you'll see there's an option for keyframe curves. And that's our spline editor. Let me click on that. And now you'll see there are these lines that we're looking at, which are actually the same things we saw over here, zoom X and Y, position X, position Y. If I switch back over this blue line, if I hover on it, you're looking at zoom X and Y right here. If you hover on the pink line here, you'll see this is our position Y. Y spline. And if you hover on the yellow one, you'll see it's the position X spline. And like I said, you can see it's like everything's moving along. It hits this first mark and takes off to the races until it hits the next keyframe and then stops dead. But what we can do is actually left click in the gray area up here of the keyframe editor, draw a box around all of those keyframes so that you can see they highlight. And then we have options right up here to actually ease those keyframes. Currently they're eased as linear, but you could decide to ease them all in, ease them in and out, or ease them just out. Now the difference between easing in or easing out, think of it as which side of the keyframe that easing is happening on. If there is a keyframe and some easing happens after the keyframe, you're easing out or away from that keyframe. If you're gonna ease the spline before you get to the keyframe, that's easing in. You're easing into that keyframe marker. That's gonna sound a little confusing, but let me show you what I mean. If I have them all selected and I choose ease in and out, it's taken these straight lines and it's added a little bit of a curve to that spline. And what that curve does, that easing, what it says is instead of jumping right to full speed, let's take a minute to get up to speed. The same way you would if you started your car when you're driving down the street, you slowly get up to speed. And when you start coming to the next keyframe marker, maybe it should slow down a little bit before it gets there. And you might be able to see the difference with them still selected. Here's the motion with no easing. Straight in, boom, stops. But if we add that easing in and out back and we watch it again, that motion ramps up and slows down when it gets to it. Now the entire motion is actually a little faster because that easing actually increased the angle and the speed is faster. And we can move these. We can use the keyframe tray right down here to draw a box around all these keyframes, pull them out. The farther apart two keyframes are, the slower the motion and the closer together they are, the faster that motion will be. So if we play again, you can see it sort of slides in nicely, nice and smooth like that. But the trick to that smooth motion is keeping all of these easing points the same. So that the zoom easing and the X position easing and the Y position easing are all identical. That's gonna give us that nice smooth motion. Now all the footage I'm using here today, I got from our friends at Storyblocks. Storyblocks is an affordable asset house where you can get things like B-roll, music, sound effects and images that you can use royalty free in your next YouTube video. And Storyblocks just added an entire section of templates specifically for DaVinci Resolve. These include animated titles, transitions, motion graphics, and more. Now I've been using Storyblocks for years before they ever became a sponsor on the channel, mostly because I really like the quality of the product and how well it helps me with my workflow. I also really like the fact that for one affordable price, you can get access to as many assets as you need there. And there are no download limits about how many high quality videos that you can use at any given time period or how many images or many pieces of music or sound effects or templates that you can download from Storyblocks. One price gets you access to as much as you need.
I'll leave a link down below if you want to go check out Storyblocks for yourself today. One of the things a lot of people who use the software have said to me is, you know, you can ease those keyframes up in the upper right inspector. And they're correct. If I put the playhead right on this first keyframe here, and you'll notice how these are all red up in the upper right, I can actually right click on that and I can choose to ease that out. I can do that for the zoom and I can do that for the position X and position Y. And I can move forward to the next keyframe and I can do the same thing up here as I could choose to ease in one at a time for the zoom and ease in for the X and Y. But it's sort of a preset easing that I don't always love because it's not the smoothest easing. Watch how this footage moves. See if you can see the flaws in it. Could you see that motion? Do you see how it's a little janky? It actually right about here shows some of the background. Can you see the black? Let me switch the background from black to red so that you'll be able to spot it. Do you see that red bar? That red bar is the background showing through. So that easing isn't always a nice smooth curve. And sometimes easing using the features in the upper right transform don't give us a nice smooth easing. They're more quick, fast, great for single motions, but they can provide a bit of bounce or get things to move a little off kilter. For me personally, I don't like to use these ones in the upper left unless it's a single motion like left to right or a straight zoom in. That's when those will work the best. And there's a reason for that based on the way the math is programmed for the spline motion, but I won't get into it. I prefer to set my own keyframe spline curve. That way I can get the motion I want. I don't have to risk showing any of the background popping through and I can get a nice smooth curve just by selecting everything and easing in and out. Now that keyframing and easing doesn't just have to apply to videos that you might be zooming in or moving around. That can apply to things you might overlay onto the video if you want something to pop out at the viewer or even text. Text is something we animate quite a bit in our video editing projects and getting it to move smoothly can be really important. So let's say right here we actually wanted to add a layer of text. Let me go up to the effects tab down to titles and I'm going to grab a text plus track and put it right above my main footage. I actually want it to start right where that second keyframe is. If you notice whenever I select the text track this keyframe tray down below disappears not because those keyframes are going away but because currently they're showing the keyframes that are selected for the main footage. When I select the text track, there's no keyframes yet, so there's nothing to show. And you'll see as I click back and forth, they appear and disappear. Now, if I add some keyframes to the text, they'll show up down there. And let's do that. So let's type no center hub. Let me change that text to black or maybe dark gray so it shows up just a little bit more. And I am going to move the position by left clicking, holding and dragging this over here. And if I click right here, it'll move it all to the left right like this. That looks a little bit better. If I just played through, it would zoom into that back wheel of motorcycle and the text would just pop on screen. That's not very pro looking. So let's see if we can add some motion to the text, maybe have it move in from out of frame to on screen. So the way we do that is put the playhead back at the beginning of the text. I'm gonna go up to the upper right inspector, switch over to settings and grab the position X that controls left and right, left click and hold in that value window and drag to the left. That'll pull my text off screen. And I wanna make sure that I set a keyframe right there for the position X and Y. Then I'm gonna move my playhead forward a little bit and I'm gonna grab that position X again, left click, hold and drag to the right to bring it back on screen. Now, when we play this through, you'll see the text just comes on screen, but you can see how it's kind of stiff and lifeless, kind of like the original motion of the motorcycle before we added some of the easing of the keyframes. It just kind of zooms in and stops, puts on the brakes. Not very smooth, not very pro looking. So let's see if we can ease these keyframes. With that text plus track selected, let's go to the upper left, open up the keyframe editor window again, and you'll see this time in this text window, we only have one spline going on, and that is the position X because the only thing that I've moved on that text track was its position left and right. I didn't move it up or down or zoom in or out. I just moved it from left to right, brought it on screen and stopped it where I wanted it to stop. But in the same way we did before, we can just draw a box around those two keyframes, go up here and I can ease them in and out. And now you'll see that that text has a smoother motion coming in. One of the things you notice is it moved a little faster. Take a quick peek at this. When I have no easing of the key frames, even though the keyframes are the same distance apart. If I go back to no easing, look at the speed of how long it takes it to come in a little bit slower. But if I add that easing back in, see how much faster that text comes on screen. It's because with that easing, I've made a much steeper motion ramp. It's a slower motion to begin with and a slower motion to end with. But this 
this steeper curve right here makes it feel faster coming in. So when you add easing, don't be surprised that sometimes you might want to grab your keyframes and separate them, move them apart a little bit. Keyframes that are closer together means faster speed of the animation. And if you want to slow that speed down, pull those keyframes apart. That has a little smoother look to it. I kind of like that. I actually wish the easing coming in would be a little bit slower. So I'm actually gonna pull this a little bit to the left. So it moves in a little quicker, starts to slow down, and it'll take a little longer to get to its position. And that's all just from the easing that we did in these two keyframes, nice and simple. So now we have a zoom and that text comes right in, kind of smooth, right? A little more pro looking. It has nice motions that are smooth and not jerky and they don't distract the viewer in any way. But I want you to start playing around with easing them in and out and see how that motion starts affecting the motion on screen. And if you want to learn more about how to edit with DaVinci Resolve, click on the video that I have on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.